Okay, medicinal herbs, plants, things that can improve performance that have been around for a long time. Most of them full of crap. Not all of them, though. We live in a good time right now because we have data to support what people have been saying for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. For example, one herb, which was highly regarded in Russia, rhodiola, has been shown in studies to improve stamina, endurance, and mood. It's actually been known to be one of the best supplements to improve your ability to handle workload. Another one, cordyceps. This is something that China, people have been using in China for a long time, again, for athletic performance. We now have data showing that it does, in fact, improve endurance and stamina. So it's a cool time. A lot of these herbs that we've been told for a long time that actually work for performance actually do. Those two are my favorites. Took I, everything Justin could muster to not go China. <laughs> I love that. I saw this. Have you seen I saw it. Have you seen that? Let's help finish. Let's have you seen that meme? It's got a picture of uh of Trump and he's, he's doing that and it says it's spelled C H Y N A. Yeah. And that time he did that that yeah. that uh that press I conference. Saw just, for herbs. I saw that just when our face. president says something like that. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, uh no, those are uh really cool. So I I remember reading about both herbs as a kid. Back, way back, because I used to, you know, you know, I used to just scour books and magazines. And I remember reading a, uh, I'll start with cordyceps. I remember reading in a Chinese herb uh, book. And th among other things, there was like ginseng. There was, you know, just highly regarded herbs. And I read about cordyceps. First of all, cordyceps is very fascinating. This is a, uh, this is a, I guess it's a fungus that literally takes, grows and takes over um, insects. Yeah, and uh, in fact, that that show that's out. Them. Yeah, that that show that's out. Last of Us. Mm -hmm. They the the fungus that turns people into zombies is called the cordyceps. This won't do that to you, by the way. So <laughs> people have been eating it for a long time. Yeah, but I remember reading about cordyceps. Uh, but back then there was no like studies, right? There was nothing to support it. It was just what you read. And then rhodiola was another one. I found some old books uh, where they translated Soviet era studies, and rhodiola was among the top herbs that they used to use for their athletes. And they said that it helped them with stamina, endurance, workload. It's, it, they, they said work capacity is what they used to say. Is that what it takes to sort of validate? Um, I remember like, it, so was it cordyceps or it was something that it was like the Chinese team was using uh, that gave them kind of an endurance? That's what they said. Right. I forgot which Olympics it was. It was like with maybe 15 years ago, 10 years ago. They were winning like a bunch of events. Yeah. And they said, and then people were like, well, how did you guys get so much better? Like cordyceps. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I know like in terms of it, um, people being interested in it yeah. and not like, cause I mean, herbal remedies, this was always kind of a thing that was a little bit like, oh, okay. It was yeah. a little bit of quackery. Yeah. You know what, you know, it's a, um, so two things on that one, when Olympic teams all of a sudden crush and then say it's the herb, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, it's probably not. It's probably, yeah. it's probably <laughs> propaganda. Like the yeah. famous story of the East German women's swim team. You guys ever hear about this one? Yeah. This was in the 1950s or 60s. And this is, bef this is when anabolic steroids, maybe it was the 50s when nobody really knew that people were using them or whatever. And the, the, the communist countries were using them before anybody else. And this East German women's swim team comes out and they were just jacked. Yeah. Dude, they were like, Dah! and everybody's Ugh. like, what is up with those chicks? And then they killed everybody. Yeah. And they, I don't remember what they said. It was, Oh, some special, you know, plant or whatever. Uh -huh. No, it was steroids. Um, but anyway, uh, cordyceps, rhodiola, and there's other herbs out there that have been basically put on a pedestal by, practices that have existed for hundreds or thousands of years. Now, some of them, a lot of them don't have data to support them because we either don't have studies or we don't have good studies. Now, does that mean they don't work? No, because when something has hundreds or thousands, in some cases like ginseng, thousands of years of anecdote, I consider that pretty reliable. You know, if it's like a few people or 10 people or even a hundred people, Okay, well, you know, placebo or, you know, I don't know if it's trustworthy. But if it's lasted that long. There's and definitely something going on. Yeah, there's there's something there. We just haven't figured it out. Uh, rhodial and cordyceps are two that are pretty good. I personally notice both of those. I, I notice rhodiola. Uh, in, in terms of rhodiola, that is a wonderful replacement for caffeine for me. If I'm going off caffeine, rhodiola helps with the edge, keeps me feeling, you know, like I'm not 
crashing off caffeine. It gives me a little bit of energy. Cordyceps, I notice when I'm doing uh, anything that requires lots of volume. So if I'm doing a long workout or back in the day when, when I used to do jujitsu, I could tell um, with cordyceps. Also improve my heat tolerance. Yeah. So like if I'm in, in, in the hot sun or if I'm using the sauna a lot, I could last a lot longer. But they both... Well, mushrooms and herbs in this adaptogenic kind of class is like they're finding a lot of real benefit in stress management, right? You, you use like the right uh, term, adaptogenic. Rhodiola would be considered an ad adaptogen. I don't know if they could put cordyceps in that category, although I, I would. Hmm. Uh, ashwagandha is another one that the would ashwagandha, be yeah. Yeah, a classic. Uh, Which adaptogen. one of those is in the red juice? Both. That Oh, they both are. Yeah, rhodiola and cordyceps are both in the Organifi red juice. So which one would you attribute? Because I, I, that's what I love to use when I'm coming off of caffeine. Um, I've noticed a huge difference by replacing whatever caffeine drink that I'd have with the red juice until I get completely uh, eliminate all caffeine. What is it in there that I most likely am feeling those effects from? Is it both or is it more than more? I would have to say there's probably a synergistic effect, although... Cordyceps isn't something that you take and then you kind of feel uh, like a little bit of energy from right away. You notice when you're working out that, oh, I can work out harder. Rhodiola, you can tell when you take it. So it's probably it's probably the rhodiola that you're noticing. But they they do work synergistically. I take I take rhodiola when I'm weaning off other stimulants. Cordyceps, I take pretty consistently. I take that almost every time I, I work out, I take it. And I've been doing that for for years and years and years. Um, it's one of my favorite, um, you know, supplements that's not creatine, right? Creatine is like the king. Um, it's one of my favorites, but those are two pretty good ones. And what's cool is we have studies and data now that finally support those two things where you can actually look, oh, here's some studies, here's some placebo control studies. Um, they, you, know, you know, they have studies on rhodiola and mental performance where they'll give it to, um, Russia, Russia did this. They, they, they give it to students. Um, uh, I think there was military tests hmm. and they put them under extreme stress and then saw how they could perform mentally. Cause one of the things is if you're stressed, lack of sleep, mental performance just takes a dump, decline, right? Yeah. You yeah, lose your, you, you lose your, your IQ goes down. You just make stupid decisions. People on rhodiola had uh, much higher capacity. Then there's animal studies. Not that animal studies always translate. Um, and to be honest with you, it's kind of a mean animal study, but they gave rats um, rhodiola and some no rhodiola and then put them in water to see how long it took them to drown. And the rhodiola group lasted longer. Um, I don't know who makes it. Significantly? I know. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Was it a lot, a lot longer? A lot. It was like 40% or 50% longer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so they actually swam way longer on the rhodiola. I know. <laughs> fucked up test. It's a messed up test, dude. It's like, you know, but hey, it showed that. But hey. Yeah, they didn't. They Progress. Didn't, yeah. Hey, luckily it wasn't on humans. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> Let's see how long you can swim. Until you drown. What'd you all, what'd you guys do this weekend? Oh, man. I, I did. I was busy. Oh, well, let's, you go. You go first. Well, I mean, I was driving around like everywhere. I went to take the boys to get their haircuts with Vicky. Um, it turns out that um, when I was driving back, so I have to go, I have a pretty far commute for this. So it's like in Morgan Hill. It's kind of like right in the middle if I can go two different ways. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went back to go 17 and there was a, somebody had stolen a vehicle and then sort of racing it. And there was this high speed chase that was going up 17. They ended up crashing it. They closed all lanes. And so I like drove all the way to like Los Gatos and then realized like we're in a parking lot. We're not moving. Oh. Nobody's going anywhere. Oh, that sucks. I'm like, no. Uh, and I was supposed to meet one of my friends that came up who, um, came up from like San Luis Obispo and we we're going to hang out. And so I was like, Oh, well, I guess that's not going to happen. Drove back uh, was kind of frustrated with the whole thing was like driving the kids, just me and the kids and Courtney was doing her own thing. Um, and so I was in, I was in the Rover and, and was just like, you know, I'm going to make this somewhat more interesting and fun. And so I started kind of getting on it a little bit and then there's like some openings and I'm just giving them an e-ticket ride like <laughs> <laughs> all the way around to get through Watsonville. What a, what a bad example you are. Justin. Terrible <laughs> example. But uh, it was all confined and like strategically, you know, the risk was high, but was, you know, just safe somewhat car. safe. They had their yeah. seat belts on. Yeah, safe yeah car. seat belts on, you know, it's all counted. <laughs> high safety rating yeah. in the car. Yeah, so we, we drove a little fast, you know, gave them a little This is thrill. such a dad thing, dude, yeah. by the way. 
I had, to, I had to flex a little and show them, you know, we can we, they, can, we can have fun with that sometimes. Fun? Oh, dude, yeah. they're just loving it. <laughs> like, go faster, dad. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, we're not going to say to mom, like, how fast <laughs> you really went. Okay, guys, that's a little packed. We a little pinky swear. Did they sell one. you out or no? No, they, they kept it together. Oh, good we for them. head nodded, you know, like, oh, we had fun, mom. You yeah. know, dad. <laughs> Drove, uh, you know, pretty pretty fast or whatever. And they, <laughs> yeah. that was, that's how they left it. They didn't say any other details, which oh, was good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we did, I mean, just that and just, uh, we had a bunch of birthdays from Courtney's family. So we had, I was just like back and forth and back and forth, like over San Jose and back. So I was just like driving all weekend, it seemed like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Aurelius, he loves, he loves uh, hearing the car rev and, you know, accelerating a little bit. It's like his favorite thing. So yeah, says yeah. Max. he'll just tell me, let's go for a drive. Let's go for a drive. And then Jessica is like, you know, we can go in my car. My car is fast too. And he looks at her and he goes, Mom, your car's not fast. <laughs> <laughs> cool story. Oh <laughs> uh -huh. He's he's right. It's not. <laughs> now this weekend, I I I um we've come up with now this plan that I think is is effective. I think it's working. So uh, you know, obviously we still we have the four month old. She wakes up every two hours or so, wants to eat, and Jessica has trouble going back to sleep. After she goes down because she gets revved up, right? So then she ends up losing lots of sleep, and it was getting real challenging. And I was trying to figure—we were trying to figure out a solution because I tried taking over a couple nights, but if she just hears the baby cry, even if she's downstairs in the bedroom, yeah, it wakes her up, and it's like a waste of time. Of right? course. So my grandmother's house is vacant because my grandmother's living with my mom. My, you know, obviously, my grandfather passed away. And it's not that far. It's like you know, a couple miles away. So she went to stay at my grandmother's house while I took over and fed the baby. So this whole weekend, I was the one getting up, giving her the bottle, putting her back to oh, sleep. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah give her a little thing. break. Yeah. Give her a little break. And I tell you, it does, boy, does that suck doing that every night. Like, you know, now I can really understand how hard that is, yeah. you know, because sleep is crucial, isn't it? It's important. <laughs> oh my God. Now this is like the second or third time you've done that now, right? Second weekend. Okay. I'm going to try and do it every weekend until, you know, until the baby gets more consistent. Uh, we got to get you those meet the fucker, like fake boobs. No. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're a man a little, and you wear a fake boob, uh, you're a kid. Get the uh, hell out of here. wrong with you? Is that a real, th did they actually they make them? Probably. Are you serious? I'm you know what sure. though? I thought I, that was like a joke. No, here's the, here's the truth. There ain't no man buying that to feed his kid. They're doing other weird shit with that. There's no way, dude. <laughs> you're probably right. When a bottle works just you're fine, right. why are you going to wear a, a fake <laughs> boob? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is for my Probably kids. Probably a whole subclass. Yeah. Any, of yeah. John, your kids are teenagers. What do you yeah. mean? <laughs> but uh, no, I, you know what? I, I tell you what, though. You know, um, there's a, there's a value in having older kids. There's a lot of values in having older kids, but one of them is, I I truly realize how fast time time goes by. Like, yeah. I and I swear to God, you know, and I'll say this all day long. If you're a parent and your kids are young, I don't know if you can completely fully grasp this until your kids start to grow up. You just don't. It's just one of those. It's like telling somebody who doesn't have kids what it's like to have kids. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. And I understand it to the point now where I'm exhausted. I'm feeding her the bottle and I'm looking at her and I'm like, this is going to be over soon. Yeah. And I'll never get to do this again with her. Now, that doesn't mean it makes it easier. It still sucks. It's still hard. It's just I fully understand like this is uh, this is going to. I mean, look, actually, your kid's old enough now, Adam. Do yeah. you look at kid, like pictures of Max when he was like one and go, that was a few years ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just, this weekend, we were at a his best friend, which is my best friend's son, who he had his kid first, then my other best friend, and then me. So we're all like right behind each other by like, you know, eight month gaps or so. Um, and it was his fifth birthday, you know, and Max is turning four in, in July. So to see them like growing up like this, you know, it's like so wild. Dude, like, how, how weird is that? Like literally three years ago, that's nothing. I remember yeah. three years ago, it feels like yesterday. Yeah. Look at pictures of your kid. Yeah, yeah. He's not yeah. this. It's not even close to the same person. We were actually having a conversation, kind of in in the same uh, same type of uh, what stuff that you're talking about right now, which is like, do you guys remember when, um, like the the month or the year when it like, like got significantly easier slash better? Do you remember like so for me the one year mark was like mm. oh you mean huge with, difference oh yeah yeah I yeah, mean yeah. Every, obviously every month every like there's like milestones and there's like changes the baby but I remember like that first year was a bit of a you know yeah you're you're right twilight zone yep, you're everything right. from 
you know, napping and scheduled and feeding to them being able to yep. play with themselves. I'd and, say the big le the biggest, mm -hmm. uh, the first one is like six months. There's like a big difference. And then the year is a big difference. And then when they're potty trained, that makes a big difference. And then when it's like they can kind of like do stuff they for themselves, dress themselves, kind of walk yeah. and move on their own. Yeah, six, the six months one, and uh, I think is the uh, that's about when all kids can sit up by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why that is because you can kind of prop them up, yeah. give them a few toys, and like sit on the couch for a little bit, like They're entertain they, themselves. For a yeah, little bit. just yeah. relax for yeah. literally like five minutes, not having to hold them. So I think that is the first bit, but they still take you know so you much you do everything yeah but one once they hit one like starting to feed themselves already walking around mm -hmm. like i felt like that was a big one and then yeah. at the two-year mark and then for me I've, from from two to now has been like just amazing it, of course every you know presents different challenges and there's different stuff that we're learning but he's just to me right now the the phase that he's at is such a fun yeah fun phase two but and three was like my favorite yeah. he, you know it's we were so we were at this birthday party it's it, you know everybody's five years and younger right and there was probably it was cool this these places i want to find one over here in the bay area this was over in the valley it uh it's like a gymnastic foam pit ninja warrior wa rock Parkour climbing silks kind of yeah. everything you could think of um in it's the, for kids yeah, but for kids and you and we rented the, that whole place was us, just us. Oh, sick. So you could rent it out for the by the hour, and and then we had a had a birthday party and everything. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. They play like crazy, and they stop and have their cupcakes and food or whatever, and they go back and play a little bit, and then you just you bounce and leave. But and they do their little rules and and do everything when they get started, and they let them go. But it had everything. I mean, and the the trampolines and the bro. I want to hear yes because I saw the video. You of saw you. the video. You flex. I want to hear. Bit. I want to hear the dad flex, bro. Yeah. Story because you know, it's, this it's, is amazing. It's a bit embarrassing too at the same time. <laughs> it's great. So it's not embarrassing. It's, it's a bit embarrassing at the it's, same it's time. It's better. It's way better than the alternative, though. You and know? You're you're yeah. you know you're right. Okay, so they have this. <laughs> like, still, listen, we're still guys. Yeah, you got to show this. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, I, you know. You better believe my 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 wife was all you know puffing her chest out and stuff like that. Then <laughs> you know her husband was the only one, right? Tell us so, the story, right? Bro, so, I, love the, got I love the video you said. So at like towards the end of the day, like before we're getting ready to wrap all up, the guy who's kind of orchestrating the whole thing is like, "All right, give me all the dads. Where are all the dads at?" And so you know, there's like I don't know, probably ten of us dads or whatever that are that are there. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, I already had my shoes on. I didn't want to get back out there. And, and she's like, get out there, get out there. Okay. So I take my shoes off. I don't even know what I'm volunteering for. And, uh, he gets everybody lined up and there's this pole that's, you know, it's like a, like a pull-up bar type of deal that's hanging from the ceiling. And, you know, and then it's right above the foam pit and you, and you have like, in, you know, those floors are like springy. So you run up and you spring up and you and you grab it and you know there was like i said there was like i don't know seven eight of us that went and did it and uh of the all the dads there was literally only two that could even grab the bar and what my mean, like they couldn't reach it or they just couldn't hold on to it both so there was some guys that some guys like just whiffed completely yeah. couldn't even grab it or touch it so they couldn't jump high enough or yeah to get tall it enough. and yeah. then one of my one of my buddies brought his brother who's younger than a little bit younger than us he saw how high it was. I didn't realize how high it was until I got there. I was like, I, I was like, oh, I saw one guy, the one guy who did it besides me, my best friend. Um, he's shorter than I am. He jumped up and got it. So I was like, oh, this will be easy. And then I got up there and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to like give a little bit. Of, like, I thought I was just gonna run up there and just kind of like <laughs> skip off or whatever. And I'm like, oh shit, yeah. it's it's up there, right? So I definitely had to make sure I, I got after it a little bit. And I got up there, right? And so I run up, I spring up, I grab it, and then I swing and I do a backflip yeah. off of it. And you hear like all the moms. <laughs> and, 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 you hear all all the the and you hear all the dads under their breath like, oh, there's always that one guy. <laughs> that one yeah. guy showed first up. Of all, first of all, the, what, the organizer, what a piece of crap. Like, he, all, all yeah, right, he dads, put come you on up, up on blast. Yeah. I mean, of course. Oh, dude, yeah, 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 you got to flex. Half those dads yeah. are like, you motherfucker. Yeah, and no. And kids are there. No, totally. Wife, right, it's all your that your, was the move. Your dude, kids, sure. right? Exactly. Yeah. Like all your kids are like watching, you know, could dad get up there and grab this pole? And so So you won. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely went Hell up yeah. there and yeah. say <laughs> and I have to admit, you know, there's this little bit of like, you know, pride that comes out. I was like, oh but how pathetic am I now that like I, guess <laughs> I can jump up and grab a fucking pole? It's like nine feet in the air. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know what though? Literally dude? the bar's low. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty low. I you yeah. know, so the the wild part, I was actually telling Doug this earlier this morning when he, we were sharing the story and I said you know, 
these weren't just a bunch of like dads that like, at least three of these guys that are my buddies were like super athletic. I mean, we all played sports all through school. So one of them went and played college football. Like these weren't like just like lazy dads who weren't athletic ever. And then they're older now. It's like but at one point, these dudes were all really athletic guys. So I was, it'd be funny if like after this, like they go back and they're like hitting the gym and there's, it's like, Oh, my buddy's it's, it's like a seed. That's just, it is right one of my buddy. The, one of my good friends was one of the guys who completely missed and whiffed the bar. And he's the <laughs> collegiate football player uh -huh. sent back. He's like, yeah, I'm uh, working on my vertical right now. <laughs> so he's already, so it definitely oh, probably, man. it probably, you know, struck a nerve for you some know of the what? dads, you, you know, know? Sure. The, the truth is, and this is, this is the thing. This is whenever I used to get clients who were older, who would comment about how it's going to be harder to get in shape as they get older. You know, when I, I always say this, to, I, this is how I explain it. I'd say, look, when you're fit and you're young, the difference between you and your peers, there's a difference, but it's not huge. Yeah. The older you get, this is one of the beauties of being fit or consistent as you age. The older you get, the <laughs> wider the gap becomes between you and your peers. Yeah. And I didn't start to see this gap until – early to mid thirties. Mm -hmm. Once you hit 40, oh my God, the difference oh, yeah. between men who work out who are 40 and men who stopped working out a long time ago, it's a different species. I really Drastic. think, I really do think 40 was the number. It's Even in 30, I was just like, you know, most guys were like still like, all right, as yeah, long as uh, they didn't like completely go off the rails eating and stuff. And it wasn't until this last few years that I really see, even myself, you, the listeners who remember me telling the story, where I jumped out of the back of my truck. That was a really rude awakening for me. Like, and I, I mean, I, I stressed it on the show, but I can't stress it enough that like, that was a big deal. Like a guy who played sports where you just jump up and down all the time, like basketball, that was a very comfortable thing yeah. for me to do, to jump out of the back of a truck and then land comfortably. And I thought my knees were going to explode. And I remember going like, whoa. And I, you know, I hadn't done it for, at that point, probably stretched five, maybe seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, and it just kind of blew my mind on like how much I lost that in that short. And that was probably 35. I was probably around that age or so when I, when I noticed that, that was enough for me to kind of wake up on that and go like, oh shit, I better make sure I include a little bit of this in my training or all this shit gets, will just go. It gets so bad or the, the gap <clears throat> gets so big. By the time you hit 50 and 60, the difference is no longer oh, he can play sports, he can run, he looks good, and this person doesn't. It's he's fully functional on his own and not on 15 medications. Yeah. He can't do certain things, literally, and he's on all these medications. The difference is I, when I used to train people in their 70s, I had people who were consistent in their 70s, and um, they were fully independent versus all their peers who were not at all. So it's like, it's, 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 I remember one time we were hanging out with some friends. This was a couple few years ago. And I don't remember where we were. We were somewhere and it was kind of hot. So we were like wearing like tank tops or whatever. And the guy, one of the dad's kids, this hurt, broke my heart. This actually hurt my heart. So I was like, oh man, I feel bad for this dad. The kid goes up to his dad, hits him in the belly and then hits me in the belly. Oh. And he goes, wow, what a difference. He's a little kid. He doesn't know any different, right? right He's right, laughing. Right, right. And I could see the dad's face like, oh. You know, because that's your kid, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, man, that sucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to take care of yourself, man. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, it declines fast. That was like my 20-year reunion where I started to see just like all my peers and everybody and just like, it, and it was so visibly obvious who at least tried versus like it was just a complete like 180 for a lot of people. And it was like, yeah. It's it happens real fast. Like you well, don't realize it, it because it's just you're just doing time. You're, you're either in your job. You're. you're I mean, it even career. happens to us. That's yeah. the part that I, that really kind of woke me up. Is like because I I'd already accept I already accepted like oh I'm of us I'm the one who's training still and, and so yeah I even found it interesting that like just specific movements yeah you know you're really good at this Justin because out of all of us you probably continually make sure you stay strong and functionally strong out of all of us the best and. That's an area that I I really had yeah, to kind of. Yeah, because you were still working out. Yeah, I you was just weren't jumping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like I had to realize, okay, I look good, 
But boy, I'm I'm sloppy loose. body but strong. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> <laughs> kind of sloppy body, body strong. <laughs> sloppy body strong. Yeah. You are stupid. He's that, dude. Hey, he's that, Follow me for more tips. Hey, he's that he's that muscle car with like primer. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes past you. What the <laughs> hell? What's well, under I'll the, just buff it out. Yeah. <laughs> What's under the hood? Yeah. yeah. Holy exactly. Shit. What's under the hood? That's no. It's matters. it's true though. I mean, just how much how quickly you can start to lose those skills because uh, they are unique and they're not things that you typically do on a regular basis. And so if you stop training them inside the gym and you're not playing any of those sports anymore, how quickly you lose that ability. I mean, you made the job. I mean, I know I tease you about running and you know, I've even felt myself before, like, you know, take a, take off to run across the street and I haven't done something like that quick in a while. And you, <laughs> and you kind of, you feel it right. Yeah. When you haven't done it in a while, you're like, Oh wow, that's something that I need to make sure I incorporate a little more of that. <laughs> well, you know what? It's the, there's, it's the myth of main maintenance. Mm. The myth of maintenance. There's no such thing. That's right. Either, you're either growing or dying. That's, That's it. it. There, yep. There's literally no such thing as maintenance. It, it may feel like maintenance because you're improving and uh, regressing at the same rate. So, right. you know, you kind of improve, regress, improve. But the reality is your body doesn't, you can't freeze everything in yeah. a time capsule. It doesn't work that way. So you are either- You have less working with you. It's like you're, yes. you're just, you know, trying your, your best to stay ahead of it. Yeah. So you're either- pushing things in the direction of improvement or you will regress. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. And if you don't do one, the other one happens 100%. All right, today's giveaway maps aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it here on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, these are the final hours for the Time Crunch Bundle, which includes Maps 15 Minutes, Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime, and the ebook, Eat for Performance, uh, if you're interested. By the way, it's only $99.99 for all of that. It's a huge discount. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. All right, so I got I got something interesting for you guys that, yeah. I, I, uh, that I just learned today. Did you guys know that there's something called the Waffle House Index? I feel like I've heard of this. So you guys Tell know me. what the Waffle House is, right? Yeah. Okay. So, the wall, so this is FEMA actually uses this. They've actually talked about using this. So, you know, FEMA, who's they like manage like storms and oh shit, what's going on over here? What's How are they using this? Okay. So Waffle House open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they're known for never closing. Like they will stay open no matter what. Well, FEMA once said that they get a fairly good measure about how bad a situation is <laughs> the Waffle with House the storm closes. by checking the local Waffle House. <laughs> So they found a correlation between right the there, two. Huh? They have. And, and now okay. that's what they're going to so use. So they have green, which means the chain is serving full menu. Then yellow, the chain is serving a limited menu. And then red, the chain is closed. And it says here, this is the FEMA administrator. <laughs> if you get there and the Waffle House is closed, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's not hilarious. That, okay. would be, that would be funny. They really use that. That's, yeah. Well, no, that's a quote from the FEMA director. <laughs> I'm not making that up. It's just, that's a real thing. Check your local wa Waffle House. That's how you <laughs> I've never it. been to a Waffle House. You've never been to a Waffle never. House? Never. I don't uh, even know where one exists. Oh, yeah. They're everywhere. Are they? Are, yeah, I've never been to one There's before. This, this, they changed this to a Waffle House, didn't they? No, it's not a Waffle House. Waffle House is an actual chain. I think they're mainly in the South. Are they? Mm. No, yeah, we have some. I've been to one in Florida, I think. I've been to a Waffle House. Are they like a the chicken and waffles, but not um, a Waffle House. How would I compare it? They're, uh, they're, a, they're a breakfast spot that specializes in waffles. They well, have I like mean, every kind of waffle yeah. that you can. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There, there's, not, well, there's, there's, not, there's not much more to explain than that. It's yeah, a I breakfast hop, I waffles. Thought, I thought they yeah. served tacos. Okay, that Stupid. makes sense. Well, yeah. No, oh, it's no. Uncle John's Pancake House. It's a pancake house, right? They're not a Waffle House. Yeah, that's different. I was like, I know, I'm pretty sure it was a Waffle House. Uh, I love how I love how Americans take uh, like desserts and then they make uh, breakfasts out of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's pancake. It's cake. It's cake. Like waffle. Mm. It's like pancake, but it's you know in a different thing. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, here's some more interesting uh, stuff. Actually, this is another good reason why you should not do long distance running. I found a really good reasons why you shouldn't. Hmm. So as you guys know, uh, we're not huge fans of. Long distance uh, cardio. Now it's it can be healthy. I mean, all joking aside, but I just learned this. Did you guys know that compared to other athletes, long distance runners poop themselves way more, like poop themselves way more than other <laughs> other athletes? Did you know this is a thing? Wow. Did I mean, know? I know it happens, right? Because it's uh... they actually they actually talk. They, it's a big thing where um, long, <clears throat> part of it is long distance runners don't want to stop. Yeah, they're in a race. 
They don't want to stop. They have yeah. to keep going. That's commitment. And it uh, sort of moves things along, all that. It's uh, not, uh, and it's it's not like, uh, for example, there's, you know, uh, Julie Moss. This was a, a Ironman triathlete uh, who's uh, lost her her bowels while she was running. It's not uncommon to see. I don't know. How many, have you guys ever trained clients for marathon? If I was a triathlete, I would do it because okay. you eventually get in the water. Oh, you know, so you don't <laughs> <attract> the sharks. <laughs> if I was just a pure marathon, though, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so how many? So um, just leaving them. Have you guys trained trailer. athletes for marathons and gone to marathons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you guys ever seen somebody run by with poop down their? No, I actually I mean, never said down the leg. Yeah, I've, I've seen, seen it. it. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I've so seen, I haven't it. seen that. So they did a study uh, as to what the heck's going on, and they said that it has a lot to do with the fact that uh, because you're exerting yourself so much, yeah, your autonomic nervous system just basically is like. And not working loosens your sphincter up yeah, yeah. and just stuff falls out now yeah. that what's weird about that is like what there's tons of sports where you exert yourself so i don't understand why why that sport. i think it's the type of exertion <laughs> right well i'll tell you what oh they don't poop themselves olympic well, lifters. long-term uh, exertion yes. Yeah. yes it's you're doing it for a long time Speaking of exerting yourself and oh. along those lines, no, let's Olymp- not talk about the pink sock. Oh, a, a, thanks for naming it, Dustin. That's disgusting. <laughs> what? Olympic lifters, they have to, re- they really have to train to maintain, you know, things down there because of the power that they exert. Because you know that there's been lifters that have blown, inverted. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Literally blown like out, blasted it out, blown out yeah. themselves. Because of the power that they generate. What's the surgery look like for that? I have no idea. <sighs> I don't want to watch it. Can you fix that? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course you can fix that. Yeah, I mean, I think you can. Uh, yeah. But there's a famous picture. Uh, Please, Doug, don't, don't look. I'm not going to look it up. Don't worry. There's a famous <laughs> picture of this of, of, of this happened to an athlete. Yeah. Where Justin's probably seen it. I have. Yeah. You have it's seen it. The unfortunate. Yeah. Now, I mean, t- part of that's part impressive. Of that's a lot of power. You got to generate, you know, strength at whatever. Yeah. But just you know, anyway, not the only sport. Well, you gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they all have their own risks. Hey, since you're on sports, okay. So, did you? Uh, you probably don't know this. Do you know who Jimmy Garoppolo is? Why does he sound from? Oh, uh, so football. Hold on. Yeah, 49er. Yeah, he, no. was. he was. He was. Now he's so yeah. he's traded, traded to, to the Raiders. Raiders. Oh, okay, which is are in Las Vegas now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So guess what? The that they just told him what he gets uh, unlimited for life sex for free. What it's, local brothel? Not- wow. Well, I think Wait, he's a professional. Andrew, is it called the uh, Chicken House? The Chicken Ranch. Chicken Ranch. The Chicken, chicken ranch, ranch, which is a which a license spin off of the Bunny Ranch. License. Like, how many ranches? Legitimate are there? brothel in <laughs> Las Vegas, <laughs> Why Nevada. They call chicken Ranch. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> chicken that doesn't ranch. make me want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was Mustang Ranch. There's Bunny Ranch, and this is the Chicken Ranch. I guess. Unlimited. Unlimited. So this is stupid. It's like uh, he's a pro. He's a professional football player. He already gets that. Yeah, but I think if you're doing going to see professional, I don't know if I'm a professional athlete. That's a good. This here's a good conversation. Mm. If you're a professional athlete, Doug he, like he's not married. Like, he's a single guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, pretty sure he's a, a single dude. Hopefully. What do you think is riskier, going to a brothel as a professional football player or just random fans that you hook up with while you travel? Rat risky in, in in terms of what? All the above. Like, STD, uh, trying to get you, trying to yeah, lawsuit, trying to get you. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, Pre- pregnancy. I, mean, I can see that. Think yeah. about that. Think of every ri- every risk that a professional athlete yeah. has by having, uh, you know, <laughs> sex with strangers. Wouldn't you agree that having it with a, a licensed, certified, you know, uh, <laughs> clean and verified and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, high performance. If, yeah. if, if, you, if, certified, they, certified. if you have yeah. all those things, you're probably a safe or bad. They're probably not trying to get a kid from you. You know what you're getting into. I don't know. I just, I feel like that's probably a, a much safer bet. For, you know what the risk though, is hmm. that uh, if anybody's ever st- staking the place out or following him and then would take pictures of him going in there, couldn't they, you know, that, that'd be a big risk, right? Why? If it's legal. Because it doesn't look good. I mean, the news knows he's been offered it for free. I'm pretty sure they all know. Yeah, he's but going if he actually now. went, if he actually went, don't you think that'd be bad publicity? If, Here he is going into the chicken house. Well, go. He's got to collect his lifetime for free membership. Is of that course. a picture of it, Doug? This is wow. what the chicken ranch looks like. That's the chicken ranch. That looks very wholesome. It, it, I know. It looks like <laughs> it literally looks like a, like a restaurant. Like a like a doesn't look. Like <laughs> Maybe you get chicken waffles right before. Wow. Maybe. Do they have a website? Find a chance. Ask you, not, I, asking you for a friend. Like a There's a lot of questions. Friend. Look, at, I want to see if they have a website. I'm serious. I'm serious. Do they have a website? Like, how does? This, of course they do. I do they really? Website. Yeah, of course they have that. And website. then what do you do? You go on the website and you order what? You, 
Oh, they even have reviews. Oh, wow. No. Yeah. What yeah. would the reviews say? Great service. Yeah. Four stars yeah. to give her five, but she had cold hands. That's the only reason why she didn't get a five. Wow. Well, look, at clean, the, look how clean it is. They have rooms and everything. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, urinals. And that's, uh, that's wild. But, okay, talk about a brilliant strategy on their part, though, to get uh, attention for this, right? Obviously, <laughs> they, have they have another professional athlete. There's a hockey player there. <laughs> is he, did he get that deal, too? Yeah. Smart though, right? Smart strategy if if you're them. Hey, how that. crappy though? Imagine if you're him, right? You show up, you're like, yeah. all right, I'll you know, I'll go here, whatever. I'm bored or whatever. You yeah. walk in, and then the other dudes are like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, go away. Jimmy uh, G yeah, approved. That's a legit uh, website, right? <laughs> that is a le legit calendar. Website. All right, all okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A little nudity there. Can yeah. have that on the yeah. show. Doug trying to better. Book no, that's on Andrews. Oh, thank God. Andrew, oh. Booking oh. <laughs> <Just computer>. <laughs> 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 hey, why was it bookmarked? <laughs> it's, it's confirmed. <laughs> hey, why did it say confirmed? <laughs> it's been confirmed, Andrew. <laughs> hey, why did it say you get a free visit? <laughs> How many holes? But, but that the other card? tab is open to Southwest Airlines. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in the in the athlete world. Why we why I can keep you guys there because we never go here. So that. But I was reading something else in regards to sports and athletes that I I was fascinated. I had no idea about this. Did you know, Justin, this? Huh. Did you And Andrew, you were involved in this question too because I know you follow sports. Did you know there was a thing called a jock tax? Jock tax? No. I didn't know this either. So professional athletes get taxed by the state that they're playing in when they play away. Like in the 2018 season, no, tax Steph Curry paid like a million dollars. If in, you play in, somewhere else? Yeah, every time you have an away game. You have an and there's only a handful of states. I think Texas is one of them. There's a hand only a handful of states Dude, that don't have that tax. That's sneaky. Everywhere else has that tax, and they tax the athletes when they when they come in and play. And they're it's wild. I saw actually a a, a, a screenshot. How do they determine how much they're? Um, it's a percentage. It's a percentage. It's a percentage of their income. Of their uh, so obviously year. yeah. Of, so of like, what they played for that game. Yeah. Or? So what they do is they divide. Okay. So if you were to let's just take round numbers and say, so you have ten games, three of them are out, out, away. Then thirty yeah. percent is taxed with the jock tax. Yes. Is that, am I right? Yeah. Well, uh, of their of their daily. So what you do yeah. is actually this: is there's uh you know eighty something games in a season. You know, a guy makes, let's just say, $80 million a year to make it easy. He makes a million dollars a game. Mm -hmm. So when he plays that game, he gets taxed on that million dollars. A percentage of that million dollars goes to that state. Dude, that's crazy. Isn't that wild? Yeah. For I, anybody who doesn't understand that that tax, a, that tax, it's, yes. Come on, dude. Look, if I went up to somebody and I said to them, hey, listen, you're going to give me 10% of your money. Yeah. And if you don't, then I'm going to take your stuff. And if you still don't, then I'm going to put you in a cage. I would get arrested for theft. That's theft. Yeah. Why is this any different? It's this is crazy. They just make shit up. And the reason why they make shit up like this is because nobody's going to protest because it's a Wow, athlete. trainers, yeah. coaches, and doctors get hit with it too. Wow. I didn't know that. <clears throat> mm. That's that's, missed. that's so stupid, isn't that? Well, you're essentially working in another state, so yeah, but you getting... still pay your other state. You pay your state taxes on your income too. Mm. So it's not like you're exempt from that other one, and you you only got to claim the income made in your own state. Yeah. If you let's say live you're in California, if you're a warrior and you make ten million dollars a year, okay. California gets their percentage of their ten million, and then when you go over to say uh, Nevada or Utah or whatever like that, which I'm just making states up, they might be the ones that don't have it. They tax you on top of that Interesting. income. Yeah. 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 Huts, so it's stupid. they are always talking about how to get more taxes, never talking about how to spend them better. That's the other conversation. <laughs> yeah. that never or happens. spend less. Have uh, you ever seen the cost? Where was this? Oh, I can't remember. I wish I knew where it was because I then we could provide the example. They were going to build it was like a public uh, bathroom getting, somewhere. High speed rail. No, they were oh that's that's it's even worse. Another one. They were gonna build a public bathroom, I wanna say in San Francisco. I think it was a public bathroom and they the the city got the bill and it was like a million something dollars and they were like how is this possible and they were like oh the cost of the bathroom is like you know 7 grand the rest goes to all the bureau bureaucrats and all the the the, the city's regulations and stuff like that it's it's ridiculous it makes no sense. Remember when they yeah. built the website for uh, when we did um, the, uh, what was it called? They called it Obamacare. That's not the actual name. Affordable Care Act. Do you remember when they built that website? So you look at the you cost told of me that, this, Like it was, it makes zero sense. Like how much money they spent on this. And then like, it didn't even work. No, I would like, I want to get the actual number because I don't want to misrepresent. It was a website. It was a website. Yes. 
And Doug's going to pull up the number, but it was an astronomical. What is yeah, the original budget was ninety three point seven million <laughs> for but the website. Grew, oh my yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it grew to two hundred ninety two million. Thank you. Before uh, the launch of the website, two hundred and ninety three million dollars. A website developer's wet dream. A website. I could take five people from Silicon Valley right now, and they could have built a better website for a million dollars. Dude, almost three hundred million. million. I don't think you need a million. No, I've never even heard of a website. You just go to Squarespace and do one right now. <laughs> and fucking kick it. It probably has to be a little more sophisticated <laughs> than that. But I mean, still, I don't know. It did crash. It couldn't even handle this. It couldn't, it the, couldn't the even server work. Crash. For so anything be better than that. that. Yeah, dude. It's, How does that happen? It's why? Because there's no competition. There's no competition. They're the, they, I mean, who's going to compete with them? This is how much it costs. That's how much you're going to pay. And that's that. There's nothing you can do about it. And it's not our money. If you don't pay the consequences for wasting the money and it's somebody else's money and nobody else can come in and say they'll do it for less, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. It's going to cost a lot. It's going to cost way more. Squarespace.com, new, uh, <laughs> you get, new sponsor gonna, we got. And you're going to have a shitty product. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you. I don't know what would be scarier than just that or you see a government website built on Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be just as scary. I don't too. know, man. When's the last time you went to the DMV? I mean, dude, wa- it's so all watermarked still, too. They didn't even pay for it to get hey, unwatermarked. Seriously, seriously. When's the last time you guys went to the DMV? Yeah, no, yeah. DMV's terrible. Well, I mean, that high-speed rail, so it it, it only made it to what, Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to make it all the it was way supposed up. to be LA to San Francisco. LA to San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they just yeah. saw oh, we're done. Dude, I went to the spent billions I of went dollars. To the DMV. Speaking of that, our buddy uh Jay I saw was said that there's gonna be a, a high speed rail that's going all the way down to Mexico. Is that what I heard it on that oh. text thread we're all in with the houses down there? Oh, did you read that? No, it's from Tulum to somewhere else. Oh, I thought it was up to us. No, no, no. Uh, oh, so you were not gonna build a rail. Yeah, no. I I was, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you know, get on a high speed rail, be down on the coast down to the Mexico beach. That'd be rad. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> that would never that would never happen. Yeah, the cost of some of these projects. Again, I went to the DMV and they're still using the green screen. The big PC computers. Yeah, they're like and the, and, and the bzz, bzz, yeah. bzz, bzz, that printers, kind of printer. scantrons. Yes. You hear those yeah. printers going. And they stamp Oregon something trail. and then go to this window and then they do the they same do that, thing. They do the uh, paper the, clip. They still then, do the credit card. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Could you imagine if the state said, uh, hey, private companies, you, as, as long as you become certified, you can now create- Okay, so the licenses. argument, just so you know, the argument on the other side of that, I actually heard it the other day from some somebody who was like, you know, pro more taxes and pro big government bullshit. Okay, so-, so Is that- An idiot, basically. A real smart person. Yes. <laughs> so the argument for things like that, by the way, DMV, postal service, yeah. stuff like that, is that- it provides services that would not be profitable and and that nobody would do. So if you left it to the free market, there's people that would not service it. Oh my God, it hurts my head. That's mm. not true. First of all, first of all, if a product or service wouldn't exist in the market, that's because it's a useless product or service, number one. Number two, if we require people to get a driver's license, then it would exist. There is a market demand. So the government could literally say, you need to have a driver's license you have to, these companies are allowed to produce them. Go and pick one. Now we have competition. It'll mm-hmm. be a lot cheaper. Post office. Okay. Uh, look, I hate to say this. I have family members that work for the post office. I get it. Let me ask you guys a question. Now, there's definitely mail that you get that you need. But what percentage of the mail do you get? Do you just throw in the garbage? Yeah, yeah. And now we have email 90. and stuff like that. So if, if something wouldn't exist in the market, now, I understand this argument for certain things like long-term uh, environmental protections. I get that. I can't under I, I can't comprehend what a market, you know, what kind of market would want to protect something for 200 years from now. That's too too long of a time frame. Yeah. So I understand. I'm not saying mm. you know we should we, it should be you know anarcho capitalism, but if that, that whole argument's baloney. If if <clears throat> if the market if there is no market demand, that's because. It's nobody wants it. Well, there's going to be okay. So the example they gave, they use a post office, and they give an example of like you know, name a rural city somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and you know, for forty nine cents or whatever, you can have a letter mailed to across the country or the world. Well, not the world, probably across the country for forty nine cents. I don't know what it would go for the. They world. don't have internet. No, this we're talking about someone who's so rural like that that doesn't have that. The, the, okay, the percentage of places like that that exist that. 
uh, are so small. Well, that I, think, I could see supporting those places. Well, I think there. But I can't. See I think that. there's more of those than you think. There's just not a lot of people in those. Obviously, that's what makes it a rural. What place, I mean right? by this is that those places doesn't that doesn't excuse everybody paying for everything all over the place. So I could see an argument saying, well, here's. 5%, which would still be huge, 5% of the U.S. would require this public service. Mm. Okay, fine. Then then let's figure out, let's pay for that. Yeah, maybe there's a compromise in the middle, right? Yeah. 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 Not I, like I was, everybody. I was just sharing that because I actually had never heard that argument before. I've always just defaulted to the same thing that you said, which is like, that's just leave it to the free market. Free market would figure yeah. it out 10 times better. But this person was making that argument for that case is that because of the fact that the, the government d dictates it, it controls it, they also can service people that would no free market would ever go there. Nobody would ever. No one's going to go start a pizza parlor in a town that has 50 people. Right. There's nobody who's going to go do a, a mail service to a place where they can't be profitable if it's left up to the free market. That's the beauty of capitalism is like it, it, it decides where it's worth it for you to build yeah. and do things. So. This is to support those communities, those people that can't do it. I thought that was a decent argument. Yeah, it's just such so. a small percentage. But I mean, here's another example. Imagine <clears throat> if, if the government made shoes. When, imagine if the government said, every, and I can make this argument, look, we need shoes. Shoes are essential. Everybody has to have shoes on their feet. We are going to provide shoes. They're going to cost a dollar because we're going to take your tax money and we're the government. We can figure out ways, whatever. And that's that. So now there's no competition for shoes. Everybody has to wear government shoes. What do you think those shoes would look like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of shoes would you have on your feet right now? We actually shouldn't wear shoes. But, yeah. 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 We actually probably solve some that. health problems if we actually just all were barefoot yeah, all the time yeah. again. No. The, the, the shoe movement. Anyway. Hey, so I have something for you guys that I thought was interesting that we're starting to see. And it'd be, it's going to be interesting to see if we continue to see this unfold. But we're starting to see, and I think I saw uh, Buck County in Pennsylvania. Maybe Doug could fact check me, make sure I got my stuff right. Um, there is uh, several schools that are starting to sue uh, social media companies, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Wow. Stuff like that. Yeah, for mental health issues and some other stuff. Really? Wow. So, I, you know, no, I don't That's know if it'll stand up in court, if they will do some sort, uh, if they will settle uh, before it gets there or not. But we're starting to see this now where schools are taking action uh, on some of these social media platforms and some of the stuff like, like, it, Currently, right now, a lot of these schools try and ban like certain hashtags and everything like that that end up driving like vandalism and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And they're blaming these social media platforms that are spreading these 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 bad ideas. What do you got? Yeah, yeah. I just see that they are uh, in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, is suing social media companies. Uh, let's see why. Um, basically, I think it's because their kids are all well. Look, it was, you, it was mental health related, and then vandalism is what I well, read. Okay, so here theoretically, you could sue a private company for causing harm if they were aware of the harm that they could cause and they did not warn you. So, in other words, if you bought a product that caused uh, that could cause, uh, let's say, some kind of cancer, mm. they knew there's a risk of cancer. They never told you. You could potentially have a case. So if they could prove that these social, so media I think that's companies, the, and I think that's the angle they're going, right? right? So like mm. you didn't tell us that their mental health could be an issue. That our kids' and mental health they, could be they an may issue. Have a case. Yeah, we mm. also didn't know that this was going to spread violence and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. I think by that's the way, the angle that they're using. By the way, at the very least, even if they lose, this is bad p uh, publicity. Yeah, for, and great awareness for everybody else, yeah, right? Yep. So I thought that was interesting that we're that's starting to see that that move, and it will be interesting to see if more counties, more schools start. I think I even thought I read San Mateo County in California was uh, jumping on board with that. Oh yeah, I can yeah. see it up there from here. I mean, I because I definitely saw the trend of the vandalism thing that was big on a few platforms with uh, you know they just hashtag and they go into these bathrooms and they just destroy yeah. these schools. Bathrooms. That's what I think that was one of the. Ha I can't remember what the hashtag was. Maybe that article says it or not, but there was a hashtag. Yeah that I wasn't familiar with and that went viral right. and it was like kids like doing destructive shit to schools. Mm. Who's going to be held liable, right? Yeah, it's the thing. It's like even so, I mean, there was that whole debacle with like the Woodstock, the second one where, you know, some of the bands, obviously they build all these bands on there that were a little more aggressive, well, a lot more aggressive than the, the first uh, Woodstock, but it was like, you know, the, the overall animosity was there and then like the music, they like, incited. the incited, yeah. the riots, but they're held liable for inciting the riots. Yeah. And so it's like. Mm, interesting. I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's, yeah, how they're going to rule that. Did any of you guys watch the uh, the documentary on uh, Netflix, the Pornhub one? No. 
Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. You it didn't was, watch the whole thing? I didn't watch it to the so end. So there was a part in there. It was interesting, um, nonetheless. There was uh, a part in it that I thought was really interesting, which was they were... They were uh, part of the lawsuit is like, obviously like child pornography has gotten out and it's their job yeah. to censor it. Their defense is that, you know, we, we have all these things in place to censor that stuff, but there's always going to be criminals yeah. just like there, you know, you put all kinds of security measures to stop criminals from doing other yep, things. They yep. still find ways to get by it. So that's their argument. Mm -hmm. the, the part that I thought was really interesting was there was a part in the court case where they compare the amount of moderators for Pornhub to the amount of moderators for say a company like Facebook. Do you know what the number like was? It was like crazy. Oh wait, they have more or less? Less, right? bro, way less. Yeah. In, in Pornhub? Yes. Wow. Like, I mean, uh, and maybe Doug could pull this up. How many moderators work for Facebook? So I get the, my number right, but it was in the like I think tens of thousands of people are employed. For sure, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people yeah. are employed in Facebook, literally just to moderate. And Pornhub was like fifty people. Dude, <laughs> yeah. So that makes like it mathematically that's it, terrible. They, they, and they 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 got into it where the, the moderators would just like you you you. They were supposed to do I think eight hundred videos a day or something like that. Like it's like like mathematically not even possible not even to possible like do a true scrub. Yeah. So yeah, they just like fat as fast as they can go through it, and then it gets checked off of like oh this should be even fun. if it gets pulled down like a video. Okay, Fifteen thousand moderators. Wow. Uh, around a hundred. No, no, eighty. Yeah, porn. That's the porn hub has eighty. Facebook has fifteen thousand. By the way, how crazy? Hold on. Yeah. What makes this even crazier yeah. is the amount of visits and views. Yes, porn hub dwarfs. That's Facebook. that's dwarfs. what I'm saying. The the amount of traffic it gets, the amount of explicit content that's on it that right. needs well, that's all it is needs exactly the whole thing is that, and then only have eighty moderators, yeah. and then something like Facebook, which is you know quote unquote you know family, you know obviously they have shit on there, but not like Pornhub. Oh, uh, 15,000 moderators? Yeah, because I, I was watching, I saw, so there was just one case of like a 14-year-old girl that like had been texting her boyfriend or back and forth, like naked pictures, and then the boyfriend like uh, uploaded it and was able to upload it on Pornhub. And then, you know, and then they were fighting them to take it down. They take it down, but then they just uploaded it again. And it was like, oh. it was on there and it was getting all like, thousands and thousands of views so they're they're making money off that video over and over again and so it's like they're, they're not real incentivized no. to so to pull you, it. Well, not only that did you see how the one and one of the ways that they're getting them right now is like so if they did pull it they would uh they they blur out the video but the title is still there for you to search for it and then there's suggestions oh if you liked this video then maybe you'll like these well that's disgusting it's right so disgusting yeah. that's so, disgusting so then so if you were searching for that specific video or something like that video that's now been removed it's blurred out but then if there's something that's close oh, that's enough terrible. I, right that's terrible so that's how they're getting them on some of this stuff right now i did, but i thought the moderation thing was enough i had me. no I was idea. like the fact that 80 yeah Compared to fifteen thousand on Facebook, a platform that's not getting nearly as many visits. That's just that's, that's just crazy. That's just for show. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Oh, we got we got moderators. Yeah, that's terrible. Crazy. Anyway, speaking of social media, do you have any shout outs? If you don't have one, I have one. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, I, I I have one that's pretty funny. I just saw this today. It's it's parenting humor. So for parents, it's really good. It's called the dad dot father. So the dad dot father on uh, YouTube. And it's just funny videos for parents, stuff that you can totally relate to. So go cool. check it out. All right, check this out. You got to check out a company called ButcherBox. They deliver grass-fed meats, wild-caught fish, heritage pork to your door. It's healthy meat. You eat a high-protein diet. You want healthy meat so you can look and feel your best. And right now, if you sign up through Mind Pump, you'll get a 20-ounce bag of gluten-free chicken nuggets for a year, for free included. They throw it in there for free for the next year. This is a pretty crazy giveaway. Go check them out. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Again, it's butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Sign up under that link and get those free nuggets. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Maya from Michigan. Maya, how's it going? How can we help you? Oh, it's going great. Thank you so much for having me on. Of course. Chef's kiss to this podcast. You guys are also humble. Love it. Thank you. Um, I'm a mother of four girls. I'm reading off my teleprompter here. Um, uh, four girls, and I'm trying to get in the best shape of my life. Um, I've started lifting heavy back in August of 2022. Right now, I'm running anabolic in my weight room in my garage. 
I have been absolutely knocked down, exhausted. And this is way before I've been weightlifting. It's been for years, but it seems like when I started the weightlifting, it got even more intense on me, um, even more than when I was pregnant. Um, my girls are all a year apart and I was pregnant for like five years straight. So um, I, I eat great, um, 80-20. I'm getting my steps in. Um, I'm getting my protein in, but I do use Oedipal's to fall asleep at night. And I have for the past five years, um, I make my own oil and my own edibles. And I know that they're about 25 milligrams a piece. Mm. Um, I can fall asleep great, but I don't get a good sleep. I always feel tired. So this is my experience. Whenever I do 10 milligrams or more of cannabis, like, especially if I do it late, I wake up groggy and then I just seem to drag ass that yeah. ne the next day it might be just how much uh of the have you had some days or nights where you've tried to cut it out for a little bit like maybe take a week off and just see how you feel okay so i have an update okay i recently got off of the edibles and i also got on a transdermal estrogen patch um i got them on, i got on them the same day but um for two days after getting off those edibles i was so groggy i can almost taste it in my mouth <laughs> like for two days. Yeah. Wow. So the withdrawal from cannabis can, can, for some people can be, um, it's rough for you, isn't it? Can be tough. Yeah. And, uh, especially at 25 milligrams, um, of, of THC, it's also, it's a fat soluble compound. So it gets stored in body fat. And so for some people, the withdrawal can last maybe a month. Some people it's mild. Other people it can be much stronger. And the side effects of withdrawal can be like anxiety, depression, insomnia is the most common one, um, vivid, wild, crazy dreams, and just feeling off. And it can also have hormonal effects on the body. So in animal studies, um, THC can reliably affect uh, hormones in both male and female um, rats and animals. Human studies are not as clear, but there's probably some hormonal effects because the endocrine system um, is just it's just tons and tons of cannabinoid receptors all over it. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that this is the main uh, issue. I think it's probably contributing, but there may be some other stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. The only way to really figure this out would be to work with someone who understands holistic health like a functional medicine practitioner because they'll be able to go down the list and look at things like gut health, hormone health, um, and then see you know what contribution – you know, THC use is, is having an, on all of this. Now, as far as what I know about THC and sleep, it does increase the, um, or improve the ability to fall asleep, but it does dramatically reduce the deep stages right. of sleep. Yeah. So you sleep more or you sleep, but you don't get the same restful effects from it. And I just, you know, the studies on cannabis now are really starting to come out and we're starting to find that it's not as uh, innocuous as we first thought it, it was. In fact, some studies show that it aged in, in heavy users, it aged the brain more than even alcohol use. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not stupid and going to say that cannabis is worse for you than alcohol. I think if we look at the total side of the side effect and risk profile, alcohol is just one of the worst things. But it does have some pretty profound um, aging effects on the brain. So I'm sure it's, it's contributing, but I would suggest working with a functional medicine practitioner to get to the root cause because it sounds to me like your body's overwhelmed with stress. There's some imbalances that are going on. Adding exercise, adding activity is probably just going to make you feel worse. Um, it sounds like your tolerance for activity is quite low. Like you do a little exercise and you just feel more tired. So, yeah. Uh, I will tell you, I since all all of this and and I can attribute both the cannabis getting off of that and the estrogen I have had the most energy that I have had in a really long time good, good. and I've I felt great I'm making gains I've lost two pounds I'm not to mention you know if I don't go to bed right away after doing an edible I'm getting the mad munchies you know what I mean <laughs> but it I, I I just I I was telling my husband because it has affected my sex life and everything and everything around me for, for years. I, I feel bad. My husband's an emergency room nurse, you know, and he sees people dying and here I am complaining about 
how tired I am all the time. Yeah. But I feel great now. I, I'm on the mend, okay. you know? Look, look, here's the other thing too, is don't invalidate uh, how you're feeling. Cause you said something like, you know, he's, he's doing all this. He's seeing all these people dying. You know, what am I here complaining about? Like, the, yeah, I get that. I totally understand that there's people out there that have it worse. There's people that have it better, but what you're right. experiencing is a real thing. It's really challenging um, it, to live like that every single day. You've got four kids. You said you were pregnant for five years. That's going to have an effect on your body. It sounds like there's something hormonally happening as well because the estrogen had a profound, seems to have a, a profound effect. Um, but hormones are tricky because there's such a complicated interplay between all the different hormones. Um, so I don't know who you're working with to, to work with your hormones, but you know, like I said, somebody with a holistic approach, they'll look at not just the hormone levels, but how your body's reacting to those hormones and then other hormones that may have, uh, may play a role because sometimes what we can do, and I'm not saying this is the case, this may or may not be the case with you, but we'll take a hormone like estrogen or testosterone or progesterone feel better. But what's happening is we may be masking uh, or putting a bandaid over what may be the root cause. So I can't stress this enough. I really think a functional medicine practitioner is going to be your best bet. At um, least a consultation, at least getting your blood works right. and at least getting somebody yes. to get, like read it for you and give you a, a lowdown on it. At least. Yeah. You know, this could be, this could be as simple as a nutrient deficiency. Mm. I mean, literally I, you know, I had a client once where we couldn't figure out what the heck was going on, why he felt so terribly and he, his, he was low, he was low in zinc. He started supplementing with zinc and like three weeks later, he felt like a new man. This was like after years of him trying to figure out what the hell was going on. He finally found a functional medicine practice. This was, this was a long time ago when they were hard to find. They did some nutrient tests. They're like, oh, your zinc is low. Took some zinc and then, so it could be as simple as that. But, um, but yeah, it's, you want to get to the root cause. You need somebody, you, you want to work with someone who has a holistic approach. You can look at everything and, and how they all communicate and interplay with each other. And then from there, you'll be able to really figure out, you know, kind of what's going on. Okay. Uh, can I, one more thing? Sure. Real quick. My, my sister-in-law and I are doing a competition to see who can lose the most fat. Now <laughs> I am, she's the one who does the cardio. She eats like a bird and, um, and you know, and she's trying to lose the fat. I am doing the eat what I want, get my protein, drink my water, get my sleep, everything that you guys say, and lifting heavy. Um, so this is cool. But um, I wanted to add a couple like little hits in between my anabolic this summer because it's nice to get outside and yeah. you know maybe walk up a sand hill and stuff. What do you think about that? Yeah, I don't think it's a good time for you to do a competition mm -hmm. with somebody to push okay. to push your body in any direction Not until while you try to figure this out. Yeah. Cause you, you could be making something worse and, uh, and I don't know if you're how competitive you are. Um, I know I'm, I can be pretty competitive, especially if it's with a sibling. Um, so you may push yourself to a point where you, you make things a lot worse. So, um, yeah. and, and to be honest with you, if you figure out the root cause of what's been making you feel kind of crummy, yeah. you'll, you'll lose body fat faster anyway. Right. That's going right. to have the most dramatic result for you if you focus more on the recovery side. Because if we're not fully recovering, your body's not really going to um, get to that point where your your physique's going to change and going to have that desired outcome. So it's really important you you vest all your interest in that direction. Yeah. You, even though I don't think any of us recommend the competition, just out of curiosity, is the comp was the competition a scale or body fat percentage? Body fat percentage. Oh, I just okay. want to prove to her that you can lose weight <laughs> okay. just lifting. Weight. Okay, so the reason why you I asked her with the, this exactly yeah. the reason why I asked her asked that is because actually your approach of getting healthy, building muscle, eating like you're eating right now, you very well could still win that competition without having to do a bunch of cardio and trying to add more or yeah. restrict. Oh yeah, because yeah. you you will you will build muscle and lean out, especially if we get your sleep all in line yeah. and you're feeling healthier and so it's that and yeah. we figure out what's going and on and she's cutting calories dramatically and you know being a cardio bunny there's a very good chance at the end of this competition you just kind of cruising along doing what's best and healthy for your body you will still kick her ass totally mm -hmm. nice thank you so much yep you got it listen right. go to uh facebook there's a group we have there uh mp oh, I got it. 
Oh, beautiful. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Also, Maya, I, I do want to send, I'm going to have Doug send Maps 15, 15 to you. Yeah, good call. Um, oh, I would love that. Yeah, because that, that actually might do you better. So if you still keep feeling like the, the, the workouts are too much and anabolic, you know, instead of doing three hard, big workouts, this is spread out over over the week in shorter, shorter bouts, maybe transition into that. So yeah. we're going to send that to you free so you have access to it. Thank you so much. All you right, got Maya. it. All right. Thanks so much for the support. Thanks. Bye. Man, 25 milligrams yeah, is a big that, dose. That, that is, yeah. That put me in a coma. I'll do like well, five, you know, <laughs> every now Oh, that would, that would be a terrible time for me. It would be a psychedelic, paranoid freak out. For sure. I'm waking up <laughs> groggy. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably still yeah. high. No, you know, the go. data on on THC, because now, now that it's been legalized in many states and we're starting to see more and more studies, um, chronic daily use mm -hmm. uh, is not as like, oh, there's not that, you know, many negative effects as, as we used to think. It actually will age the brain. I, heard, I saw yeah. that. I saw it's been going viral. People shared that with me. The the yeah. new stuff that came out. I mean, I personally, I personally, I'd like to know more. I so I responded to someone who DM'd me mm -hmm. that, and I said, you know, I'd like to see more. Like, what else do we know about like chronic you know, marijuana users too? Are they yeah, eating healthy? Are they data. also training? Are they smoking it? Are they eating it? Like. So I looked at some of that data. What's the milligrams? Like, well, so I looked at some of that data, and it's it's decently controlled. It's not perfect, but there's some pretty decent controls, and so there's definitely uh, something happening from the cannabis that is um, causing this in the brain. Now, look, here's what I know personally for myself, and I titrate it and I stop it mm -hmm. for this reason right here. I just am not as sharp. And my memory recall is not as good. Memory recall for sure. Something. Yeah, so I... I mean, it doesn't surprise me. That nothing is... <laughs> too course. much of anything of is course. never good. You of know course. what I'm saying? So it's a reason why we've said since day one on this. It's why I yeah. rotate through the caffeine, why I rotate through things I create, and why I rotate through things like this, like yeah. with cannabis. Like, it's just... Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it ever becomes... It's not a free pass. Yeah, I mean, it's not I is, ideal yeah. to be dependent on anything. I didn't tell her this, but she'll get a chance to listen to this. And I wanted to ask you again, Sal, because I brought it up that... Um, cause I told you that, uh, I'm not an edible guy, right? So I, I've been trying though to smoke less and, and yeah. utilize edibles more often. Part of why I don't like them is cause it disrupts my sleep like oh, this. Yeah. But what I did notice, and I told you that I started using, um, our Ned to bump up the CBD level with the, to balance uh, out the THC. to balance out the THC. And I do notice a better night's sleep yeah, with that. Yeah. Hmm. So if she's still using the edibles, when she hears this episode, that may be a, a path that you can try and see that made it helped me when I was doing the, the gummies like that, because it was just fucking my sleep up. Yeah. But when I bumped up the CBD with the THC, it actually seemed to mitigate some of the negative effects. Now I don't, that's just my own experience. So well, I, I mean, you, you know, and this is okay. This is speculation, but when you look at nature, Mm -hmm. And the way things are naturally, you often see mm -hmm. natural balancing. What we did is we took a plant and we found the thing that makes us high. And then we bred the shit out of it to make it produce way more of that thing, yeah. which then because of that, it produces way less of other stuff. But natural marijuana is it's relatively balanced. Now, I mean, you go to the dispensaries, you won't find a strain that's anything less than 20% THC. Um, so yeah, it's no wonder. So you're balancing it out with other cannabinoids. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Our next caller is Vincent from Ontario. Vincent, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, how are you guys? Good. Good right? um, thank you, A. Um, just want to say, first off, I wish you guys were around 25 years ago. <laughs> and um, I've learned so much over the last two years. Uh, so thank you guys for everything you do. Thanks. And um, also want to reach out and say thank you for those that refer you guys. So two years ago, my friend Corwin put me on to you guys and it changed my life. So I appreciate uh, everything awesome. those nice. people do as well. Awesome. Over the last, so here I'll get into my question. Over the last nine months, I completed anabolic, uh, anabolic performance uh, and uh, aesthetic. Uh, but I completed them all with a home version of the gym, mostly dumbbells, no real barbell use. One factor is, I work from home and it's easier to do it in the morning. Plus, secondly, I just turned 50. Um, I know I've tried dumbbells before and I get a little bit worried about injury because I end up loading the bar a little bit. Uh, I know I'm missing a little bit from the barbell use. 
Um, so I don't know if you have an opinion on the home office um, versus I'm going to start going back to the office now. And they just open up an office gym that has a Smith machine. Ideally, a rock squat would be better. And I've heard you guys talk about a Smith machine not being ideal. So worried about my age and injury. Does it make sense to use a Smith machine for squats, deadlifts, bench, and overhead press? Or is it best just to continue with my natural body movement with dumbbells? Yeah, Vincent, so so this is a, um, a it's, it's a logical question, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you an analogy, okay? Just because a skateboard has four wheels doesn't make it a car, right? So a Smith machine has a bar. It's not barbell work. It's not, it's not barbell work at all. It's Smith machine exercises. So it's not a, you know, replacement. Now that's not to say that there aren't potential exercises you could do on the Smith machine that might have some like bodybuilder type value. Yeah. Bench press and overhead press. Yeah. Bench press, overhead press, you know, stuff like that's fine. I wouldn't do lower body stuff on it really. Um, I, maybe, maybe a, maybe a stationary lunge if you want to mix it up a little bit, but you're totally fine working with just dumbbells. It's, there's, there's nothing wrong with working with just dumbbells. Are you missing out a little bit, maybe a little bit of force production and all that kind of stuff. But I think you're totally fine just sticking with the dumbbells. And then with the Smith machine, you can try exercises that the Smith machine has a little bit of value with like the ones we just mentioned, but it's not like a, like, in other words, you're like, Oh, okay. I want to do barbell deadlifts. I don't have a barbell. Let me do deadlifts in the Smith machine. Not the same thing. Or like, I want to do barbell okay. squats. I don't have a barbell. Let me do squats on the Smith machine. Not the same thing. Does that, does that make sense to you? It does. So in, in some respects, my thought was to start running back through all three back to anabolic and maybe then maybe using the barbell as, uh, barbell, as you say, for the shoulders or, or, or bench. Yeah. And then I would slow down my reps since I'm only about 50 pounds for doing deadlifts or something. It's not a lot of weight they have at that gym or even at home. So would you recommend slowing down? the rep to get the benefit yeah. of or, say deadlift or with someone like you, I especially say, I think you, you look like you're in pretty damn good shape. Okay. So first of all, I think you're doing good. Um, I would do single leg stuff, yeah. Yeah. a single leg deadlift with your, what that's going to give you for you know, stability and strength by going to unilateral movements. So I think that would like, maybe what we'll do is send you map symmetry. Oh yeah. Map symmetry, hundred percent. Cause I think map symmetry will be extremely beneficial to, you know, just to piggyback off of what Sal said. Um, are you missing out on a little bit by not having barbell? Sure. But like you're talking about so little. And I think what you're doing by rotating through the programs that we have and using dumbbells, you're, you're not missing out as much as mm -hmm. you think you are. If you were somebody who had like a set of dumbbells and you kind of did the same routine all the time, then I'd say like, you're missing out on a lot. But the fact that you already had the wisdom to kind of be working through all those programs, you're getting a novel stimulus as you move from program to program, that's going to signal to build muscle. And now that you're kind of getting to a point where you don't have enough weight for something like a conventional deadlift, well, let's move to single leg stuff, unilateral work. Unilateral work will be phenomenal for you, especially since, you know, the risk versus reward is something that you've already addressed. So I think that's a, a great option for you. Yeah, you'll be able to build all that strength stability with dumbbells, no problem. And I think the unilateral direction is the way to go. Like the Smith machine just isn't the same animal that you think it is in terms of it looks like a barbell and uh, mm -hmm. it looks like you can pull off of some of these moves. However, it's completely in uh, one direction it, uh, in terms of it just following a line and a guided line. It's not going to give you the same type of demand uh, and force output that you would uh, if it was a free weight situation. So um, yeah, I, I think that honestly, you're going to do the best with, with the dumbbells and then maybe supplement for some hypertrophy type moves. Like they're talking about overhead pressing and, you know, I guess, uh, in that regard. Um, but yeah, you can do a lot if you just stick with the dumbbells. Yeah. We'll send you map symmetry, Vincent. And then all you got to do is skip the last phase. The last phase is barbell five by five. You're totally fine skipping that and just running through map symmetry, all unilateral. It's all dumbbell work and you'll have, uh, you'll have a blast. Well, part of me is even thinking, do I take a gym membership for a month and do that maybe barbell use? and switch it up a little bit. Um, I mean, if it's if, possible, if, yeah. if you'll do it, I think it's a great idea. Hell yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. If you have access, yeah. go for it. I mean, there's, you know, well, 
sustainability outweighs optimal, right? Sometimes people mm. get so caught up on like, what is, is yeah. this more optimal for you? Well, it, it, it could be more optimal for you to get in the barbell, but if you're less likely to be consistent mm -hmm. with it and fit it in your schedule, then it isn't optimal yeah. anymore for you. So you have to weigh that out. So like, yes, that would be great. Like if you're a client of mine, I'd say, man, and you're open to getting a membership and getting a barbell, I'd say, yeah, you're ready for it. You've yeah. strained through all those programs. I think it'd be great for your body. But then if you said like, man, Adam, it's just, it's rough sometimes to get over the yeah. gym and I'm not consistent. Then Pay I'd say, attention you know, to that consistency. Yeah, that's, that's far more yeah. important. So you got to weigh that in for sure. Okay, that's fair. All right. Well, cool. I appreciate everything you guys do. And again, thank you for uh, putting out the content that you do. You got awesome. it, man. By the way, we were around 25 years ago. We were just young. <laughs> yeah. no we would have gave you terrible podcast. advice back then, I'll be honest. Yeah. We would have told you all kinds yeah. of bad shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Thanks, Vincent. Thanks, guys. You all got right, it, man. Take it easy, man. Yeah, it's a, you know, kind of a, a like a wise question. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a really good question, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm glad he mentioned the Smith machine because people look at it and they see a barbell on it and they think, "Oh, I could substitute every barbell exercise with yeah, the Smith machine." Yeah, it looks machine. the same. Yeah. And it's the same thing, it's just more stable. In some cases, it's similar and more stable. In other cases, it's completely different. Like a deadlift on a Smith machine is not a deadlift. Yeah. It's not. You can do a stiff-legged deadlift on it, but it's not a conventional deadlift. Well, especially a squat, too. I mean, it, not it's going to alter the mechanics of the squat, totally. especially when you go back to it. So it's going to like actually cause dysfunction, which is would be problematic. Well, not to mention that some of the greatest benefits of a barbell back squat or barbell deadlift is the instability part. Yeah. Mm. So if you take that component out by putting it on a track, then you're purely just doing it for hypertrophy reasons. And if you're purely doing it just for hypertrophy reasons, I can think of a whole host of other things that I can yeah. do with you sure. with dumbbells and your body weight to get great hypertrophy results from it. So mm -hmm. the idea of loading up the Smith machine super heavy, just so you could do some sort of a, a back squat. It's like, well, I'll do some Bulgarian split squats with you with dumbbells yeah. and we'll rock, oh, yeah. we'll rock that all day. Yeah. And that, you know, more effective. Yeah. You hang on to a pair of, I mean, 50 pound dumbbells. That's heavy for me to do Bulgarian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? And see and see what kind of uh, hypertrophy yeah. that you get from that. So I'd much rather see or walking lunges no. or reverse lunges. No, or what you have with with free weights is free weights follow your body. What you have with any kind of machine is your body has to follow the machine. Does that mean that one is better than the other? Not necessarily. It just means that there's strengths and weaknesses. And if you want to put yourself in a position to where you're forced to follow the machine because you're doing an exercise that would never work in a free weight environment then Smith machine can be kind of cool. Like I could do like a hack squat looking squat on a Smith machine that would never work with a free barbell, but it's not a trade. It's not an even trade. Uh, there's benefits and there's detriments and overall uh, free weights are superior. Just there's, it's not even a question. Our next caller is Josh from Texas. Josh, what's happening? What How up? Can I help you? What's up, Josh? Awesome. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good, good. good. All right. So my question is, um, how does someone maximize muscle at a certain body weight? Um, so just a quick background, uh, about last year I competed in boxing. So, and I was walking around at 150 body weight. And so I, and I cut down to 137 and, uh, this was a pretty quick, drastic weight cut, at least in my opinion, it was my first fight. So, uh, yeah, so I did that in three weeks. So from 150 to 137. Uh, it was my first meet again, so like I was super hyped. I wanted to make weight, and I was just kind of doing what my coach at the time said. So, and the calories I was eating was uh, about sixteen hundred, uh, so very low. Um, it was clean though, you know. I was eating my protein. Um, I made the weight, did the fight, uh, everything, you know, felt good. But when I after the fight, I did jump to like one fifty five, eating very bad. Um, just because it was like my first weight cut. So like the, 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 how do I say it? The discipline after was just cause I did it so fast and so hard. I bounced back pretty, pretty bad. Like with the eating too, especially. Um, and I also noticed I lost a lot of muscle. I, I got super skinny, uh, even though a good amount was water too, but I did lose a good amount of muscle. My lifts went down and, uh, I still felt strong, like body weight wise. But yeah, my, my muscle did go down. Um, so I guess how does someone, like, let's say if I want to walk around, maybe like 145, maybe even 140, how does someone maximize the amount of muscle they can build at that certain body weight? And then for those cuts, maintain that 
maintain that muscle? Well, that's a great question because there's a lot of nuance here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different. So first off, did you win? I did not. <laughs> I actually, so it was a three day uh, competition. It was the Golden Gloves from San Antonio. Oh, wow. Uh, I won the first match, didn't win the second one, but uh, I was excited because after t having 2020 off, uh, you all know why. Um, I was like training at home, moved here to Texas, found the first boxing gym. My coach was like, you should do the San Antonio Golden Gloves. Uh, and I only had three weeks to prepare for it. Uh, and I just wanted to get the, uh, the butterflies of competing out yeah, the way. Yeah. So, and so the, when's the, when yeah. are the weigh-ins before the fight? Is it right before the fight or is it like the day before, two days before? Uh, it's usually the morning of. Okay. So you're not going to do like a crazy water cut. Uh, otherwise you'll be dead. Uh, you know, you'll feel like you're death while you're fighting here. Here's the challenge with weight classes in, especially in combat sports. You don't see this in other sports where there are not any weight classes. You would think being as lean as possible would be the best bet, right? You would think I want the yep. most amount of muscle and the least amount of body fat. But at some point that starts to kind of decrease your performance as well. There's an athletic body fat percentage that works best for performance. Then there's like shredded where you look good at the beach or on stage. And that can often be very different. Now it, there's a, there's a range. Like I've known people who 6% body fat perform incredibly. I've known other people where That's they get so below, rare. yeah, they get below 11 or 12% and they just, their performance goes down. Well, you have to understand why this is too though, right? So it's, yeah, especially for an, endur an endurance sport. I mean, you, your fat stores a ton of calories for you yeah. and that is, becomes beneficial when you're in a long fight or a long run. So having none or very minimal of it is not ideal for like stored energy. Not and also there's just a lot of unknowns. Like, um, I mean, if you follow fight sports, you know, sometimes fighters don't look shredded, but they got like crazy stamina and endurance. Um, uh, you know, when, when they're yeah. fighting, I remember Cain uh, Vela Velasquez. Yeah. Cain yeah. Velasquez or Fedor Emelianenko. Fedor, like yeah. he, I mean, these guys that looked like they didn't work out, but they could fight for forever and ever and ever. And then he had like these shredded looking guys that, didn't necessarily have the stamina. So this is all going to be totally about performance. Now, I will say this about weight classes. The thought the the thought process is if I could be if I could be as big as I is I, if I could be a certain weight and size and then cut down and fight smaller guys, I should be able to outperform them. But if the cut is drastic, if it's not healthy, then you yeah, you're smaller, but now you feel like garbage. Okay? So sometimes fighters do better at higher body weights because they just feel more comfortable. I can't necessarily answer this for you because I've known people well, on either side of this. What's what's the weight class we're going for and where do you weigh right now? So uh, I'm again, I'm about 150 right now walking around. Like I feel strong. My lifts are getting pretty strong. Okay. Uh, at least as far as the weightlifting side, uh, w my training though, I do feel a bit slower, which I don't like. Uh, uh, my endurance isn't as much there, but also just hasn't, I haven't been focusing on the endurance yet. Uh, just been like, I don't know. I had a shift of after that fight, I've been focusing on my, uh, strength gains and muscle and, uh, muscle endurance. Uh, but when I was training for that fight, I was around like 140 and I felt great. That's the thing. So like maybe under, under like the barbell squatting, uh, benching, all that, like, I wasn't strong, but body weight wise, like I was doing more push ups, pull ups. Yeah. Um, like I felt strong. Like I, I was pretty lean too, but I wasn't muscular, if that makes sense. Yeah. So if you I, were, to, so I felt, if, I felt like an animal, but I don't know. What, what, so we're, okay, if we if we were to do the next fight, what weight, that, what weight class are we going to fight in? That's what I want to get at. Like, because what, what I'm trying to get at is I, my, what I think is ideal for you is to actually, Try during your training get to to a place where you're you're relatively close to the weight. Yeah, you're you, within like seven eight pounds. Yes, less than ten. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. less than ten pounds away and watered up. Right, so I'd have you pushing water like crazy. You'd be drinking a gallon of water at least a day, and I'd want you to be within under ten pounds of the weight that you want to fight in, so that when we cut, first of all, I know I can drop you know five pounds of water weight off you pretty quick if you're pushing a gallon plus just alone and then we lean out a little bit but it's not a hard cut so you you come in at the weight that you're yeah. kind of training at are so. you trying to do 135 mm -hmm. again yeah about 135 137 i would have yeah. you i would have you walking around at no heavier than 145 143 and what that might look like right now for you diet so it sounds like you've been focused more on getting stronger probably increasing calories 
uh, how clean of a diet do you run? Do you do you allow like junk food and candy and uh, ice cream stuff with like that? Or I would, you- I would say, I would say like a ninety ten, like like five eggs a day. I got that from Sal. Actually, I, I'm not up at eight eggs yet, but uh, <laughs> five five eggs, about a pound of ground beef a day, grass fed, uh, fruit, like whole ingredients. Uh, probably processed is like protein powder. Uh, and then maybe weekends with the girlfriend, we'll go out to eat and uh, keep it usually whole food. So here and there. Okay. Don't forget, women weak in the knees. Just kidding. That's, <laughs> that's, I, no, that's yeah. insane. You said that. That's insane. That's that's so true. That so true. <laughs> you confirm that? <laughs> hey, let me tell you. Bo- hey, boxers. They, it's so funny. They're so funny wisdom. about that. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's a that yeah. was a Mickey's quote in uh, in Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the deal. I would have you walk. I would have you walking around never any heavier than 145. So that when it's time to cut, yeah, you're cutting like less than 10 pounds because those drastic cuts are going to be really tough. Now, as far as the food relationship part, I'm going to tell you something right now. This is just, well, let me ask you this. Do you plan on being a professional boxer or is this something you just do for fun? It's one of those things that's like, do I kind of want to make that sacrifice? And I have those like self talks, those, those like meditative moments where I'm just like telling myself, this is what I want to do involve my life around. Even if, you know, yeah, who knows what the outcome is. It's like, like we'll have one life to live, so might as well shoot for something. Yeah, I, look, I, I I get that. How old are you, Josh? Twenty one, about to turn twenty two next month. Yeah, I get it. Okay, so look, here's the deal. Um, I'm not going to preach to you, okay? But but here's what you're here's what you're going into. Some of the hardest people I've ever had to work with were people who who competed at weight class sports, wrestlers, boxers. Really hard because to compete. You know, there's healthy and then there's performance and to do really well in, in, in sports where you have to make a particular weight, you are, you are totally going to eat and you're going to, you're going to work on building a relationship with food that is not healthy, but it's one that's going to help you perform. So it's like cut and the gain afterwards. And then I'm in competition. So now I'm eating strict. Now I'm not in competition. I can eat a lot more. That's going to be really hard to break later on. But look, I also understand this. You're young. You love boxing. Um, there's also quality of life. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I mean, this sounds like it's something you really enjoy. But just know that the whole like, how do I deal with the weight gain after part? Um, right now, it just means signing up for another competition. That's it. But later on, this is going to be something you're going to have to work on. It's I, I, you're not going to you're not going to work on it now. In other words, we're not going to be able to work on food relationship now. Aside from being within ten pounds of the weight that you're going to fight at. That's the best possible thing. Other than that, I mean, this is high performance now. We're talking mm-hmm. about high high level athletics. It's not longevity based nutrition and stuff like that. That's a totally different conversation. Right, and I and I would say my relationship around food is is pretty healthy. Like I don't feel like I need to eat this way. I choose to eat, you know, these whole food organic grass fed whatever. I choose to do that. Okay, and it makes me happy. Um, and just real quick for protein wise, would you suggest still that gram of protein per pound of body weight? Like let yeah. me walk around yeah. 140, obviously 145 or more. Yeah, no, I would go a gram. I think yeah. you're fine with a gram. Awesome. Yep. Yep. <sighs> all right. Well, th- thank you all so much. And it's funny because I, I want to start listening to podcasts. I always listen to Joe Rogan, like just Joe Rogan, just Joe Rogan. Now it's just all my phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, Josh, circle back, over. circle back with us, bro. I'd like to, in fact, let's, uh, I'm going to have Doug put you in our private forum. Cause I, I've awesome. actually been wanting to go in there. Yeah. 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 So, so. I'm, I'm going to have Doug throw you the private forum for free so we can uh, keep tabs on you and just keep us, but whenever you talk in there, tag us, let us know how the training's going, inform us on the diet and stuff like that. There's a lot of other coaches and trainers in there yep. too. So yep. we will just love to hear your, your progress and, and, and see if we can help any way we can. Awesome. Thank y'all so much. You got it, man. Good luck, bro. Good luck. Yeah. Ex-boxers are notoriously obese after they stop uh, fighting because you're so conditioned Mm -hmm. to train and and be strict for a specific weight. You said the weight cuts. Is that any more? Because I would would think that I I, I had that experience with almost all athletes. It is. Especially football players. Especially football players. Like football players – 
uh, used to eat like eat like horses, and they're used to training like horses. And it's then because it, the energy expenditure, mm-hmm. you know, they'll never be able to replicate that. No. like uh, you know, in regular life. Not so, when you're forty. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true no. for all sports. That's one hundred percent. But when you're when you're in football, well, yeah, you don't it, really have yeah. a weight. Class. No, you're right. Because yeah. you know MMA, uh, it's extremely it, difficult. Boxing, wrestling. You have to. Not only do you eat like a beast, Dude, you also cut like nobody a, like, lives at the weight or anywhere near the weight that they compete at when they wrestle or do you know boxing nobody yeah. it's like look at all look at these mma guys when they stop they're like 40 pounds heavier i will say though okay it sounds like this kid's got a good head on his shoulders he does i mean it sounds like he's into like the health aspect of it and i really mm-hmm. felt like that's where this co- question was coming from i don't think it was like hey guys i need to get shredded what do i yeah. do what i need to do he's yeah. like hey i want to be healthy how can i maintain yeah, how this but still perform yeah, at yeah. A high yeah. Level how do i how do i do so i, I mean he's yeah. asking the right questions it sounds like he's eating pretty damn well he's got a good relationship with it he's already yeah. questioning do i want to do this forever yeah. I, mean, I, I like this yeah, kid i like tough. to hear i like to hear his his progress i yeah, do same. think you guys yeah it, it nailed it it's just really it's as close as we can get you know within that under 10 pound kind of mark cuz like if you're living in that body you're competing and, and practicing yep. uh with that body you're going to be the most effective it, it's these drastic ones yep. that I'm like super worried about. You know, um, th- I know that, and, and obviously, if anyone who's a boxer or fighter is going to cringe when I say this, but because there is no real comparison to boxing and competing on stage. But I will say this: <laughs> right, right, you know, I got to laugh right now. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I got to get it out because you know, because you know, someone's going to be like so offended that how dare I compare yeah, those so two real athletes? The okay. dieting, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Rings, yeah it's fucking, you know that, right? Like, I know. Oh, yeah, I know what it's like. Sometimes I go yeah. on stage and flex. No, no, I'm sorry. Heaven sorry. forbid, we're I done, even we're done. We're not done. even we're say done. That. the done. dieting aspect. Yes. You know, one of the things yes, that this part, yeah, I know where you're going. So. You know, I I uh, I took a lot of pride in the ability to really uh, be quote unquote healthy all the way up to like the last two to three weeks. That's it. And I really think that if you if you know two to, your body is resilient as fuck. So an extremely low calorie diet and high energy and so that for two weeks, especially if you go into it healthy, yes, yeah. is not is not is not, not detrimental. Where people get in trouble is. These extreme diets and extreme training for an extended period of time, and then running it back and back and Bro, back. Well, these out. fighters will yeah. try and cut twenty pounds, fifteen know that, pounds in like a week. That's what I'm saying. And so I think if you can do it, yeah. and 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 be in a real and the way. I, so where I'm trying to go with the parallels to the competing is, I never let myself between shows get way out of control. Yeah, what were you yeah. in the off season? Twelve percent body fat, maybe. Yeah. No, not even not 10. Even. Yeah. yeah, I would hover around 9, 10%. Most people are like, oh, off season, 18% body fat. Yeah, no, I'd hover around 9, 10%. Uh, and then I'd, I'd cut down to like four. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And, and, and I would in do 12 a, weeks? Yeah, <laughs> slowly do it. And really, the, the the cutting or the hard, you know, cardio and stuff like that didn't even get involved yeah. until the last two, three weeks. You know what's interesting about this? I said this, you know, to him, but it, it really is true that there's like a body fat percentage mm-hmm. that you'll perform your best at. And it's not mm-hmm. shredded. It's not, it's usually not shredded. Some people it is, yeah. but for a lot of people it isn't. Where they get too Fedor lean. Fedor is the best example. Yeah, or Cormier or whatever. Like yeah, these yeah. guys are like oh, yeah. you know, and those are more extreme examples. But I've never worked with anybody. I actually think who the, perform great at less than ten percent body. Yeah, size. I think that's no. more rare. I think it's an anomaly when you see these both on the the football fields. Like we always highlight those people, right? Because they look yeah. great. Because they genetic. Yeah, they look and, like covers of yeah, magazines, yeah. and they are crazy performers. But they're such an anomaly yeah. to be able to keep that lean. Of I body would fat. say the body fat percentage for athletes that's generally good is like 13 to 15 percent maybe even a little higher that's typically what you'll find our next caller is jeanette from nevada hi jeanette how can we help you jeanette did the the patient survive they're doing great okay Uh, yes (laughs) (laughs) sorry i am at work i dipped out for a break so i could do this with you guys i do work in surgery oh that was just Uh, (laughs) well thank you (laughs) yeah Yeah. keep pressure on um thanks for having me i'm super stoked to be here actually like super fangirling incredibly nervous so um thanks for having me you guys awesome all right so my question was i i am a newer nutrition coach i've been in the health and fitness space and i work in medicine i've done that for a decade now but newer in the nutrition space and i have um a couple of my nutrition clients that are um motocross athletes and my question was, is I have one of them in particular that is really struggling with um, arm pump about three quarters of the way through his moto. So I had 
told him to up his sodium intake and um, electrolytes. And he said it alleviated it in the round two section of it. He didn't have as severe of arm pump. So I was just wondering, is there like a nutrition aspect for fueling his body and to mitigate that? Yeah. So I, so I got, I remember the first time I had a client. We actually used the motocross as an example. We did. Yeah. I had a, I had a client exactly same. And he came to me and said, hey, my arms get really pumped while I'm racing. Yeah. Is there anything you can do to prevent that? It's and a problem. Like, I've never had anybody, I've had people ask me the opposite yeah. where they want a better pump. So I wouldn't do anything with the diet to prevent the pump because- Worst training. Yeah, it's all about the training because uh, the pump is actually a good sign. It means you're hydrated. It means everything's working well. What you want to do to prevent that pump from getting in the way is he wants to do a lot of frequent exercise with his hands and forearms on a daily basis. Rice buckets. So, so like grip strength and stuff? Just yes. throughout the day, all day. Yeah. And what will happen is he'll build lots of stamina. Lots and, of frequency. And he won't get he won't get the pump. I, I love the idea of getting one of those five-gallon buckets and filling it with rice and having it at his house or somewhere where he's or he work. He just sticks his hand yeah. in there. He just gets, around, gets in even, there yeah. for a few minutes, works it, squeezes it, flexes his wrist around, and then comes back like yeah. just all day long, all the time. Yeah, with, with a low intensity. Yeah, so no. he's not going in there and like getting a workout. He's just he's okay. just keeping him active and moving throughout the day because otherwise he'll overtrain very quickly. That'll be the best way. And then nutrition wise, I, I wouldn't do anything to prevent a pump with nutrition because whatever you do with nutrition to prevent a pump is going to probably be, not be good. It'll probably prevent performance or reduce performance. Yeah, make him low calorie. Yeah, he'd, he'd be low calorie and probably low not, carb or something. Yeah, like that. we don't want to do that. Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah. He's racing. Okay, so he kind of like he doesn't like to eat the day he races. He said it sits like you know your nerves. You get kind of nervous, and yeah. mm -hmm. um, it sits too heavy in his gut. So like the night prior to, can you do like you would do like with the endurance athletes and like carb load him incredibly and and some sodium, or am I off on that? No, aspect? that's that's totally fine. But here's the caveat: is you first off, I would I would only do something he's done before and he knows he responds well to. Because sometimes okay. what people will do is they'll, the day before a competition, they're like, oh my God, I got a carb load, I got whatever. And then they, they, then get, they bonk. Like, yeah, they, or they have gastro through. distress, yeah. right? They, they'll they get diarrhea or, or, or bloating and then that reduces their performance. So it's got to be easily digestible foods and something he's done before that he knows like he feels good, uh, that he'll feel good the day after. I mean, there is... <sighs> So here's the thing. This is here's where we have this this like uh, this challenge that you have an athlete who's been eating a certain way for performance, and if we manipulate too much nutrition just to to to, to not get the pump, we end up affecting his his overall performance because now his energy sucks or whatever. Right. But okay. I mean, there are some benefits to a you know moderate protein, high fat, low carbohydrate type of diet where he he's running off of ketones versus being all full of carbohydrates. I mean, you have like someone like an endurance athlete, like uh, our friend, what's his face, who Zach Bitter, yeah, who's Zach Bitter, who runs like a ketogenic diet, and then on the race day, he's. I like, wouldn't do that with motocross. Yeah, I mean, I try with motocross. Yeah. I, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. because this person has it. But if he has, if he in the off season right. had trained himself to get into ketosis more, there are some. I mean, one of the one of the benefits of the high fat and and low carb type of a diet is you are flat. You don't you don't pump up as much. So yeah. So so with performance, the performance that you get from running off ketones is really good for low level, constant, steady state uh, type of activity. Motocross is yes, lots of endurance and stamina, but there's a lot of explosive. Yes. Well, there's components. That's, so there's uh, to me the grip. point I'm trying to make right now is that there might be a, a happy medium for this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So he may be used to running a high carb diet and now he moves to a you know moderate and a higher and higher fat and protein which less less carbohydrates in him is going to be less water retention that's just a fact yeah which will result in potential but the challenge that we have and, and this is just me talking out loud between these guys right now is that you have an athlete who's been used to eating a certain way and performing. We manipulate too much of that just so we don't get a pump. So he doesn't get a pump, but then his, then his riding sucks because he has yeah. no energy. Or what, I mean, basically, Jeanette, whatever you do with this person, you're going to want to practice before right. um, competition day. Run. Because, yeah, because okay. you don't want him to develop any gastro issues or, you know, like, oh, you know, I fueled up, but then I also gained four pounds of, of water. And I'm stronger, but now I'm carrying four more pounds where, you know, when you're doing motocross, like there's just, it's about strength to weight ratio. 
It's not just about strength. You can get stronger, but if you get heavier, then it negates it or might even be detrimental. Remember, the, the, there's just only a certain amount of, amount of horsepower and performance that the motorcycle can can produce. And if you get heavier and stronger, but now you're heavier, now you're not going to go as fast or be able to perform as so well. That was part of what he was kind of concerned about is because when he came to me, we started at 175 and I have him high protein. He was like 1.12 per pound per body weight on protein. And then I put him at a high carb with a moderate fat and he's up to 181 pounds now, but he's super lean because he's, you know, he's resistance training and he's putting those laps down on the track. So he, yes, his, I think his lean muscle mass definitely increased, but does he feel better? Does, does he feel, does he, is he performing better or is he saying he's performing worse? No, he said he's performing like his endurance, like to be out on the track, to run a 20 minute, um, practice moto. Like he said, he feels, he feels good. And okay. it's just like race day. He, he struggles still with the arm pump stuff. So okay. that was that I didn't know if it was a nutrition manipulation or a training thing to focus on. Training, yeah, training mm -hmm. would be the main direction to go. It doesn't mean though you can't play a little bit with this car. How high are the car? What are the grams of carbs in a day? Do you know? Uh, three fifty five right now. Oh yeah, you could bring that down. Yeah, he could bring that down. You could bring that down two fifty to yeah, three hundred. So yeah. running like on a carb cycle, going no, in a couple days. Before? No, not necessarily. Just bring him down to an bring his fats up and bring his carbs down a little bit. Yeah, that okay. he'll lose a little bit of water by doing that. Yeah. And that and that might oh. help a little, yeah. So so we don't have to go drastic one one way or the other. And that's what I was looking for was if he's at that high a carb, he could yeah. easily. And, and how long are these races? Twenty minutes. Just scale it. Um, like practice motos are twenty minutes long, and then usually like a regular moto, depending on laps, it, you're going to run fifteen, almost twenty minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he could cut fifty to one hundred grams of carbs, and he, but test it though. Test it out. Test get first. feedback. Okay. Yes, because there's 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 this, a lot of individual variance when it comes to performance. But the, okay. get that rice bucket going. Yeah, so, but lots, of, lots of frequent you know, exercise for the forearms, the mm -hmm. biceps, the arms. Um, you're not looking for too much hypertrophy. What you want is incredible stamina if he's suffering from the arm pumps while he's, uh, while he's racing. Have you guys ever seen, um, I can't remember the name of it. It's like this little like rubber bar. Like sometimes people have utilized it for like the tennis elbow, golfer's elbow thing to help with that, to alleviate that tricep extensor tendon. Is it this here yeah. that rotates? Yeah. 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 That's, that, that's fine too. But you know what I've noticed that helps with people like this the most. So that's a good exercise, but if he has inflammation at the insertion points up here by the elbow, um, yeah. I, I have never done anything that works better than really deep tissue massage on those areas. Sure. Uh, I would, I would add doing the wrist cars from our maps prime pro. Yeah. Do you have maps prime pro? I have Maps Prime, not Prime Pro. I'm going to send you Prime Pro for free, and then oh. utilizing the the wrist cars in there will be beneficial to him also. Okay, yep. that's good. That's good. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. You yep. got it. All right. All right. Go back to saving some lives say, there, huh? Like, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, thanks for having me, you guys. Uh, you guys keep my mind fed with all your information and highly entertained because I have to commute two hours to my job. I don't live in the same city that I work in. So you guys, uh, those road trips back and forth to work, you guys super keep me entertained and my brain fed and going. So thank you for what you guys do. Well, awesome, thanks, awesome. thanks for bringing us along thank the ride. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks guys. Have a good day. You, you too. It. Man, I remember that when I got that client, I was so like confused. Yeah, when she said, I was like, that's so funny. You've actually told a story about a motocross at their client. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a perfect example of when it totally is a detriment, uh, you know, to performance. Yeah, you, you know, when you, you, you see that with, uh, I used to do that with judo guys, jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. guys. I had a Your guy. grip just like gives way. I had a guy who played the guitar that became a yes. problem. That, that, that you, was, and you yeah. told me about the same uh -huh. thing, right? Same thing, yep. Where your hands just freeze up. Yeah, it would freeze up. I actually lost the pick because I just had such a crazy <laughs> pump. In that that sucks. Yeah. Because when you're lifting weights to build muscle that's what you want exactly. you want to get so pumped you can barely move yeah, so yeah. you know it's interesting but yeah it's uh you know when you're when you're working with people like this you have to test it out because i made this mistake so many yeah. times i feel so bad oh the day before oh, we're gonna get all these carbs we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and then the, you know the day after they're like i feel like garbage you know that was you know? one yeah. of the things i hated about the ketogenic diet we talked about it when if you go back far enough on these in the show when we all went through it one of the things i hated was the never getting a pump Mm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that was one of the the downfalls yep. of actually running the ketogenic diet. Was yep. like, man, I was just every workout I felt flat. You know, yep. so yep. 
I do think there's room for someone who's only 180 pounds eating 350 grams of carbs. I bet, I bet he could go down to 250. I think he yeah. could at yeah. least go down to that uh-huh. and, be, and be fine. And totally be fine. Uh-huh. And still have plenty. So, Especially because it's a 20 minute ride. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So the combination of that with the frequency of the the strength training stuff with like the rice buckets and then also doing wrist cars, I think that those three things I think could help them out. Awesome. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with all kinds of health and fitness stuff. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I am at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of weak points and and areas that I struggled with developing for a a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 